This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live, your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Let's do some live television and radio. Thursday, March 25th, wherever and however you're connected, Nice to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with the man who's ready to run it back for at least one more year in Studio B, Jerem Jordan. Yeah, uh, we're what, eight years into this or something? I lose track, but uh, yeah, it's great to be here. The reason we bring this up is because, uh, unfortunately, women's basketball lost Arizona. We'll talk about it in a moment. But Jeff Judkins uh, said um, after the game that his team plans to return next year, even the seniors like Paisley Harding and Sarah Hampson. So that's exciting. That's awesome, man. Everybody was, coming back. Was Tegan Graham a senior, I assume, as a grad transfer? Is she coming back too? Yes. Uh, yeah. She They're all granted piece, that like, extra year. That's great. Al- Alex Barcella, we would love for you to come back. Yes, please. And Alex. Brandon Avery and Matt Harms. Alex. I know you guys said you're done, but so did the only childs. Somebody started a petition, I'm not kidding, for Good. Alex Barcella to come back and yeah. send it to me yesterday. So oh, I didn't even have to start it. It's not a laughing matter. <laughs> it's... It's It's unbelievable. Your show lineup includes a bunch of guys who will not run it back because they have legit pro aspirations. Oh, they'll be running. They will be running, running. just not back to BYU. They'll be running at BYU for pro prospects. A BYU football pro day preview. Which Cougar has the best opportunity to improve their draft stock the most tomorrow? ESPN NFL draft guru, one of the lead voices in the country. Todd McShay will join the show to break down Zach Wilson's current status. Is he going number one? Is he going number two? What's the farthest Zach Wilson could possibly fall in the first round? McShay will tell us. Plus, game day for BYU baseball. Ace pitcher Easton Walker joins us live to discuss the keys to a four-game win streak and how the Cougars plan to make it a drive for five. Here are today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Women's Hoops loses 52-46 in the second round of the NCAA tournament. Paisley Harding broke her hand, by the way, Monday during the third quarter against Rutgers, but played through it as best she could for 22 minutes last night. In the game, Shaley Gonzalez scored 13 points to lead the Cougars, passing the 1,000-point mark, the 32nd Cougar to do so. Congratulations to Women's Hoops on getting to the tourney and winning again. I had someone ask me, what happened to the karma for Paisley? And I said, she selflessly passed it off to Shaley, knowing that she had a broken hand. Now, that's a teammate, Jerem. Yes, yes, and we cannot overcome broken bones. So, yeah. Jesse Wade of BYU Men's Basketball announces he is entering the transfer portal After one year of being eligible with the BYU Cougars, he did mention the door is still open to return to BYU. Wade played 42 minutes on the season, scoring a total of nine points. Women's soccer and Cassidy Smith recorded a uh, clean sheet at San Diego in a 6-0 win. Rachel McCarthy scored a hat trick. Michaela Coulihan, all she does is score, man. Seven straight games with the goal. Are you kidding me? Coulihan and McCarthy are quite the duo up front. They're amazing, and it's McCarthy off the bench, right, who has yeah. the, the hat trick? Are you kidding me? Rachel's a rising star. Hey, it's game day for BYU Baseball. We just mentioned opening a three-game West Coast Conference series at home with the San Francisco Dons, beginning at 6 Eastern on the BYU TV app. BYU has won four straight. Easton Walker, the ace, .70 ERA. Amazing. We're going to dive into that. He's given up a couple of runs, Jerem, so we probably need to figure out – why that happened. He has two runs in 25 and two-thirds. I think yeah. there's a real issue we need to discuss with him. Softball falls to Stanford 5-4 in the home opener, although it was a very good game. Aris Paulson smashed a three-run homer in the bottom uh, of the first. Brookhill Barrington had a solo homer as well. Uh, Spencer Linton just calling homers for days. Woo! Uh, they're back at it tomorrow uh, in a doubleheader against Boise State and then Saturday against Southern Utah. Weather All on permitting. The app. Weather permitting, right? Yes, W H and W E. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. BYU men's golf tees out today at the Goodwin Intercollegiate, hosted by Stanford. Cole Ponich working on his third consecutive top five finish after he finished third at the Lampkin Classic. All rise and shout. It's time for what's trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. Pro Day Preview. Let's do this. Tomorrow we have a BYU Sports Nation two-hour special 
All Things BYU Football Pro Day. And uh, we need to tell you everything that's going to be important leading up to said event. Presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event, our Pro Day Preview 2021. Jeremy, let's start with this question. Which BYU Cougar has the potential to raise their NFL draft stock the most tomorrow with the performance at the indoor practice facility? Uh, I'll tell you who doesn't first. It's Zach Wilson. <laughs> He's on film. Like, everything's on film. It's amazing. Maybe it's like, and, and you and I got married uh, pre, you know, uh, mutual app or whatever. In, in, like, where you have to meet the person in person and confirm kind of like, Oh, yeah, you, like, look the same. I wasn't catfished. And, You're a real person. And you, like, seem like the same person. You know what? I, I don't know what that's like, but I imagine that's what it would be. Maybe that's what it's like for the scouts with Zach Wilson tomorrow. Like, oh, yeah, we've already had Zooms and whatever, but, like, meeting you in person, you have this presence, da-da-da. Zach Wilson is not going to be affected either way by a ton of what happens tomorrow. Now, he is not going to do anything but throw. It's what he told us. He's checking boxes tomorrow. Yes. Yes. So... It's going to be fun, and the focus will be on Zach Wilson, not only from us, but NFL Network and ESPN, who has cameras there as well. Um, and by the way, I don't know how much NFL Network and ESPN are going to show of the whole event. We will show you every second from 12 to 2. So choose where you want to watch it, but we're going to stick on it the whole time. Yes. Um, and replays and awesome, right? Interviews and everything. Also, there's DVR. Yes, there are. You can get your TiVo out if it's 06 or something. Let's talk about the guys to your, to your question. Um, I think Brady Christensen is one of those guys that could really help himself. He's probably like an early day three guy uh, in some spots. He could be a day two guy. Oh, you think he he's, could push his stock up that He's not high. a day one guy, but he's probably a day two guy at best if he performs really well tomorrow. And, and remember, it's, it's the 40 and it's the bench and the three cone and the 20 yard shuttle and the 60 yard shuttle and the vertical jump. Like some of these things matter with linemen, other things don't, but it's an opportunity to impress. I think the other two offensive linemen as well could become interesting if they're not drafted, that they're uh, undrafted free agent types. Chandon Herring, Tristan Hodge uh, for the guards. Dax Milne is a guy that I think will will surprise a lot of people tomorrow. I think he'll be – I know you, you've you not been high on Dax. I've been oh, the only one that's been high please. on Dax. No, tomorrow he's going to crush it. Kyrus Tonga can help himself as well. Rumor has it – rumor has it that Kyrus Tonga is like – in great Chiseled, shape, cut. has dropped like 20, 25 pounds, so we'll see that tomorrow. And then Chris Wilcox. I think it's like perhaps the the guy who has the biggest upside that isn't really on the radar where I think he's going to run a good 40. He was quietly really good. Um, it, you didn't hear a lot from him. He didn't pick up a lot of passes because dude just didn't get thrown at and batted passes down quite a bit. So I'm excited, man. Like tomorrow is perhaps the best pro debut he's had in, in – what, 20 or 30 years with pro prospects, and it's going to be awesome. And those weren't on TV. This one is. So it's very exciting that we'll have that opportunity to broadcast. There will be some former Cougars from the 2019 squad that will also yeah. join the fold. They didn't really get Austin an opportunity. Austin Lee, Micah, Simon, and Lava Hifo. Yeah. Uh, Bo Tanner, Isaiah Armstrong, I think, are the five. So as you go through that list, again, let me reiterate that BYU hasn't had multiple draft picks in the same draft since 2009. Yeah. It's been 12 years since BYU I, had more than one player honestly, taken. Honestly, that's pathetic. Like, BYU can do way better than that. 12 yeah. years since Come BYU's on. had multiple guys taken. That will change this year. Yeah. Automatically with Zach Wilson and Brady Christensen. They, that, it is guaranteed that, that yeah. those two guys are going to be drafted. And it would be, I think it would be disappointing if it was only those two. So we're hopeful that maybe it's double that. Four, Kyrus Tonga. Three or four would be nice. Maybe Dax Milne sneaks in in the sixth or seventh round. Can Matt Bushman, which is the answer to the question for me, improve his stock yes. enough? Yes, I left off Bushman. He I feel there. like Matt Bushman is the clear winner here in terms of a guy that could raise his stock the most because by nature of the injury, he just fell completely off the face of the earth to NFL Pro Scouts. He was a guy that his junior season impressed a lot of people. Honey hands. He never drops anything. Can make incredible catches. He never even contested. dropped a class at BYU. That's how much he doesn't drop anything. Matt Bushman 
can put himself immediately back on the radar tomorrow with now, an expanded pro day yes. spectacle NFL network. Yeah. He's going to be catching passes from Zach Wilson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Honey Hands is the guy to me that could be <laughs> the big winner tomorrow for BYU. Now, you're a crappy scout if you forgot about Matt Bushman, but he didn't have a chance to sort of uh, elevate his, himself, right? They, I, I'm sure the scouts are like, oh, yeah, that guy. He's good, but he's but, been injured. But, and, and unfortunately, so he's six months out. I'm interested to see what exactly he does because you don't want to risk another injury. It's still like early ish in the process, but you still want to impress. So um, he joined us on the, uh, at the women's volleyball match. Saturday, we talked about his foundation and aces and money going towards that. He did say he's going to do his best to try and see what he can do what he's comfortable with um, so that he can impress as much as possible. Because, yeah, he's a guy that if he plays last year, like, he's drafted, period. Um, but but now it's like, okay, he'll be a free agent at least, like, no doubt. For all my sneaker hounds, Matt Bushman is the pair of Jays or Jordans that got a little scuffed up, maybe the air pockets turning a little bit yellow, so you put it in the box and kind of store it away for a little while, and then you pull them back out, refurbish them and you're like, oh man, I love these shoes. And and you want to wear them and you and you want to love them again. Like Matt Bushman's gonna be that guy. He's he's the pair of shoes that you love that got a little scuffed up, but he'll come out, he's gonna look shiny and bright tomorrow and improve his stock. I'm looking forward to that. Okay, our question of the day. Who has the opportunity to increase their NFL stock tomorrow the most at BYU Pro Day? You tell us. We've given you our opinions. Let's hear from Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. Dan Smith on Twitter. Dan Smith bringing it every day. Obviously, it would be huge for Bushman coming off that Achilles injury, but let's not forget about the guys from the year before who couldn't do Pro Day during 2020 because of COVID-19, like Aleva Hifo and Micah Simon, and Zach will be throwing to them. Hashtag BYUSN. Now, Aleva did get a shot with the Kansas City Chiefs. Not once, but twice. That might be just because of his... Andy Reid connection, BYU ties. Well, I, I don't know that it's BYU nepoti- BYUtism entirely, but um, otherwise every BYU guy would get a shot there, right? Um, but, yeah, some guys do. Um, and then he got a tryout with, what, the Rams or something um, as well after it didn't work out. But, yeah, Austin Lee in the mix as well. So Austin Lee was a guy we thought for sure would sign a f- like an undrafted free agent contract. He didn't even get that. It's hard a year later to be in the mix. If those guys get something, that would be really you got to cool. do something really impressive tomorrow. Yes, that would be awesome. Scott Solberg on Twitter says, Dax Milne and Matt Bushman. Wilson and Christensen are already on plenty of radars, but Milne and Bushman are flying under the radar. This is their chance to really get noticed. If Dax Milne can run like a low 4 five forty, because that's kind of where he takes some criticism. Oh, he's not very fast, but his route running is precise. It is Silly. He's lined up how many times across from high-level cornerbacks and pulled down touchdown catches against the likes of USC and yeah. whoever. I mean, Dax Milne's a guy that can make plays. Can his speed be there? I think he could help himself in that category. Yeah, and and like a three-cone drill would really yeah. help. Obviously, the 40. Um, like, bench doesn't matter. Uh, but, like, vert, <laughs> vert could help, right? Um, all that stuff. Yeah, and I think it's going to be awesome. As David Nixon calls it, the Underwear Olympics. It's going to be uh, exciting tomorrow. Think about Dax Milne and his NFL comparables. Is he a guy that you could see in one of those positions in the slot? Yeah, why not? Sure, right? Like with New England. He feels like an NFL receiver yes. in that spot. He feels like a, an Austin Collie later in his career who goes to New England, makes some plays in a playoff game for Tom Brady, gets complimented by the GOAT quarterback, because he's always where he needs to be. He's prepared, and he has awesome hands. Yeah. Like he's going to catch no, everything. He, he has all those attributes, so let's go. Hashtag BYUSN, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Tell us which BYU Cougar you think has the chance to raise their stock the most tomorrow during Pro Day. Bitcoin. Who's the Bitcoin? Okay, uh, coming up, did something I say get into Jeff Judkin's pregame speech? Maybe. And ESPN's NFL draft guru, Todd McShay, joins us to discuss Zach Wilson. Is it? legit that he might go number one and what's the farthest he can this potentially fall in the first round by BYU food to go the MVP of your next event BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU store official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere 
Watch Zach Wilson, Dax Mill, and Brady Christensen and 17 other former Cougars work out for NFL scouts, GMs, head coaches, offensive coordinators, quarterback coach, O-line coaches. A-list guest lineup it's, there. It's impressive, man. Uh, we'll tell you about it tomorrow in a two-hour BYU Sports Station special. Full coverage live on BYU TV and the app of Pro Day. We are live in Studio B with your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play. I am Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. It is our Pro Day preview, and part of that preview includes longtime ESPN NFL draft analyst, sideline reporter Todd McShay, who joined us recently on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Todd, it's about time we featured a heralded quarterback from the big blue of Swamp Scott High School in Massachusetts on this show. So (laughs) thanks for being that guy and hanging out with us today. You did your research. (laughs) (laughs) That I did. And you have done your research on Zach Wilson. uh, And we're very interested to hear about what his path in the NFL draft uh, will include over the next uh, coming days. So let's start there. We recently confirmed with Zach, we talk with him every week, that the Jacksonville Jaguars sent him a playbook. They've been essentially testing him, trying to yep. uh, you know, find out everything they possibly can. What's the likelihood that Zach Wilson actually goes number one to the Jaguars? Uh, I, I think it's a very small percentage, but I, I'll, I'll say this, and I've talked to Urban Meyer multiple times. They're they're doing their due diligence on on all these quarterbacks, but I, I think especially Trevor Lawrence from Clemson and and Zach. And the one thing that you know, not to dig too deep into our conversations, but they've been very impressed with his his mental aptitude and and how quickly he picks things up. And you know, I, I think it's you know, if, if everyone in the country thinks it's a hundred percent deal done that Trevor Lawrence is the number one overall pick, I don't know that Jacksonville is quite there yet. And, and I'm telling you, they have been digging deep into Zach to try to figure out if, if he could be the guy. And then if it's not number one to Jacksonville, then it gets interesting. I mean, that, that's where the draft, to me, kind of starts if, if Lawrence is number one, as, as most people presume at this point. And the Jets have a very difficult decision to make. Are they going to move Sam Darnold, their existing quarterback, and, and get some and, and pick at number two? get some trade value for Sam Darnold and, and draft Zach Wilson. I believe Zach will be the pick at number two, or will it be moving out of number two to a team like Atlanta, Carolina, San Francisco, move, trying to move up to go get Zach Wilson. So I would say the odds on favor to be the number two pick in this draft is Zach Wilson. And that's really interesting. And I know that uh, Mel Kuyper has not wanted to do the trades in his mocks. He finally convinced him, which is really fun, right? Because of what you said. <laughs> Took 15 <laughs> years. <laughs> Just 15 years. Jeez. Uh, it's taken a long time to come around. But that, that Zach will go number two, that's really interesting. And we've been talking about, well, his ascension from – just winning the job at BYU to being a number two pick is just incredible. So in 2019, you were in Provo for the USC overtime win, and then BYU lost the next week to Washington as the sideline reporter. What have you seen since seeing him in person to now? Because there's been a tremendous leap. There has been. And it, listen, you guys know just as well as I do, he's always had the talent. It's, it was just a matter of developing and, and staying healthy. You know, he had the shoulder injury and the hand injury. And, and this past year, he comes in, and obviously with COVID and everything going on in a really unique year, and he just played lights out. And you can make – listen, if you, if you want to pick holes in him, you can say that the competition wasn't great, and I get that. It, it's not like playing, you know, if you're, if you're Mac Jones from Alabama. It's not like playing in the SEC. It's not like playing uh, the, the Big Ten schedule if you're Justin Fields from Ohio State or even Clemson. But – I, I just watch him in terms of his ability to extend plays, his feel in the pocket, and then his ability to throw off platform. And it reminds me, you know, I, I hate throwing the Patrick Mahomes thing on him because it's, you know, it's almost like a curse to say that he's going to be the next Patrick Mahomes. I'm not saying that, but he's got a little bit of that in him. And he's got a little bit of Drew Brees in him as well in terms of being sudden and knowing that he's not the tallest quarterback in the world and that he's got to change his arm angles and he's got to find his own passing windows, and he does a lot of that on tape. I, and I love his ability to throw, as I said, off-platform when he's on the move. I, I think it was play six of the Boise State game, the, fir- the sixth offensive play for, for BYU in that game, when he rolls out to the left and he's off-balance and he's got to turn his hips and throw the ball, and he hits a, 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 an out route about 15 yards down the field, and the ball is, is right where it has to be. Perfect placement. 
And that's what he can do. And that's what you're looking for in the league is guys that if the initial play breaks down, can you extend, especially when you're young and you don't have all the answers mentally in terms of what defenses are throwing at you. ESPN NFL insider and draft expert Todd McShay with us on BYU Sports Nation. We're discussing Zach Wilson and where he's going to go in this draft. You brought up the comparisons to Patrick Mahomes and a little bit of Drew Brees, two of your colleagues at ESPN, notably David Pollock and uh, Ryan Clark, compared Zach Wilson to Aaron Rodgers. How would you assess that comparison? I think it's all, I think we're all saying the same thing. You could throw Deshaun Watson in there, Baker Mayfield. Any guys that can move around, and it starts with sensing pressure. So if there's pressure from the outside, are you, are you feeling it without your eyes dropping, and are you able to climb the pocket? And if it comes from the inside, are you able to slide and move with, again, your eyes up and, and looking down the field, and then knowing when to pull the trigger and knowing when, all right, this play's broken down, it's time for scramble rules. We've got to get outside the pocket. We've got to, you know, I've got to take off running or I've got to, I've got to get moving so that my receivers have time to, to get open down the field. And I think that that to me is, is his best trait. And then obviously the ball placement and his accuracy are hugely important in the NFL and, and any level. So those two things, you can say, whether it's Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, Aaron Rodgers, Baker Mayfield, they all have kind of similar skill sets varying degrees. I mean, no one's Mahomes. Mahomes is the best. Aaron Rodgers is right up there. Uh, but he's in that, he's got some of those same traits and that that's why we're talking about him as potentially and probably the number two overall pick in this draft, which would be the highest BYU Cougar ever drafted. That'd be, that'd be wild. Do you feel like, really? do you, yeah, top, top five, uh, I guess, Jim McMahon and Ziggy Ansah. Those are the, uh, the top of the peak huh. at number five. So when you look I at learned something, there, hey, there you go. It only took us a few minutes. Here. When you look at Zach Wilson in the schedule, obviously it was set up to be much tougher. Six power fives. They all dropped out. The pandemic obviously blew up schedules. BYU played the best schedule it could, including taking a midweek game at Coastal and whatnot. Do you feel like Zach Wilson took advantage of that? Because if BYU plays six power fives and still has a good season, ends up nine and four, I'm not sure he's getting top five love, but maybe I'm wrong. What do you think, Todd? Well, you can only project, right? You can only project. But what I see on tape, it kind of, I don't want to say it doesn't matter who he's playing, but you see the skill set and you see the traits. And that's what you're looking for when you're evaluating a quarterback. And then you've got to dig into, you know, the, the personal character, the toughness, uh, the leadership and all, and all the intangible things that, uh, that you can't see on tape. So uh, listen, I would love to have seen him in an SEC schedule or to see him against, you know, a bunch of power five teams. I would have loved to, because it would make my job easier, but it's hard to get done with his film assessment and to look at him and say, he, this is not a first round quarterback and, and someone that doesn't belong somewhere, at least in the top 10. What's the lowest you can possibly see Zach Wilson dropping in this 2021 NFL draft? Jeez, I want to say two because I've <laughs> kind of staked my claim on it. But um, I would say, I mean, the lowest would be eight to Carolina. You know, you've got you've got Atlanta picking at four, Carolina at eight, San Francisco at twelve, New England at fifteen. All of these teams need a quarterback. So, and, and we've seen every single year, almost every single year that I've done the draft, at least one team and, and usually multiple teams move up to go get quarterbacks. So if Atlanta really wants to go get the heir apparent to Matt Ryan, they're going to probably move up a spot or two, or they're, they're going to be set on Trey Lance from North Dakota state. Carolina is desperate for a quarterback. So they're going to, I'm, I'll be shocked if they don't move up on draft day to go get a quarterback. So I, again, I, I think eight would be the, you know, doomsday scenario uh, for Zach Wilson, but I, I can't see him getting that far. We don't have the typical NFL combine in Indianapolis with everyone out running and, and, and testing. So how much do you think a, a player can rise or fall due to the unique nature of this year's and last year's uh, lack of NFL combine? Uh, this time of year, it really comes down to pro days and interviews. That, that's, that's it because of, there's no combine. And the combine sometimes can be a detractor because you get too, too caught up in the numbers. But the biggest thing, the two biggest things, and everyone kind of overlooks it because everyone want, wants to see the, the vertical jump and the 40-yard dash, the, the two main reasons why they started the combine was to get everyone in one, one place 
So you didn't have to send doctors all around and you didn't have to go do interviews all around the country. You could just get them in one place to do it and save a lot of money. It was just more efficient. Four days, you're in there, you get medical, you get, you get everything from the interview standpoint, psychological, and then you're able to get some, some workout numbers as well. So again, I, I, sometimes it can detract, sometimes it can be a positive for your evaluation, but I, the take to me is, is 70, 80% of the, the pie. Then you got to figure out the medical, which teams are probably spending a lot more money this year, having to go around the country to, to test these guys. And then the psychological aspect as well. And the tricky part is the senior bowl is the only place since the beginning of the season where NFL scouts can actually sit face to face and talk to a player. And they had, they still had to have a, you know, a, a, a thing in between them. So if, it has been a struggle. And I know talking to a lot of different scouts, it has been a real struggle this year, you know, talking on zoom and, and doing everything the way we, everyone's doing in business now, uh, trying to figure out who these guys are and, and what their real character is and their personalities are and trying to fit that into what they want in, in an NFL team. Todd McShay of ESPN with us on BYU Sports Nation. We, we know Wilson is clearly on the radar, projected top two pick, but BYU does have six different guys with uh, a quote-unquote pro day invitation. So who else really has piqued your interest coming from BYU, Todd? Uh, Brady Christensen is, is interesting, the offensive tackle. I mean, he's, he's big, he's, he's got length, and the thing I like, two things I like about it is it, he's technically sound. He's been well coached there at BYU. You can tell. And his hand usage, he's got really strong hands. And when he latches on to a, a defensive player, he does a really good job. And I, I think, you know, he's not in one of the elite tackles in this class, but I think he's going to be somewhere in that fourth, fifth round range. Um, Tonga, the defensive lineman, is it Kyrie? You guys know how to pronounce it. Kyrie Tonga, yeah, he's, he's going to be a late round pick, I think, as well. Um, he's got some versatility. You know, he's, he played five technique there at BYU, kind of, you know, between the guard and the tackle. I think he can play inside as a three technique. He's got enough quickness, and, and I think he's, he could be a value player as well. Um, and, and then going down the line, you got Dax, Dax Miller, the wide receiver, and, and then Matt Bushman's another guy who unfortunately had the injury this past year. Uh, but he, he, does, he doesn't have great speed, but he's, he's a complete player otherwise. I had a third, fourth round grade on him coming into the year mm. prior to the injury. Um, we'll see what happens. He'll probably be a late round pick, but, but he catches the ball so well. He's so reliable. He knows how to use his body to shield defenders and he'll block. And there's not a lot of tight ends in college football now that you can work in line that will actually line up and go block for you. There's a reason they call Matt Bushman honey hands because he catches everything. So he catches uh, everything, he catches man. <laughs> everything for sure. Todd, we know how busy you are. We thank you for your time today. And uh, yeah, we knew that we were uh, in for a treat when, when we talk about a guy that is best friends with Dave Portnoy and, and you put up with Mel Kuyper. So <laughs> th- thanks for being with us today. I got a lot of headaches in my life. <laughs> <laughs> you got to take care, man. We wish you the best. All right. Take care, guys. ESPN's Todd McShay on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how. That was fantastic. Yeah, great breakdown. And uh, he, like many people, in love with Zach Wilson and where he could go. He said, I want to say two for the, you know, lowest. But he said, could be eight, uh, you know. But That's yeah. the lowest he thinks Zach Wilson could fall. Number eight. Zach's going to be top ten. Like, he's not going to drop outside the top ten. Will he last until oh, at Carolina at number eight? Go ahead, mark it. Yeah, I don't think that he's going to drop out of the top five. I just think there are too many teams that desire a quarterback that would potentially yeah. move up and take a guy like Zach Wilson. Well, and you have three in the top five already. Yes. The Jaguars are going to take Trevor Lawrence, and then it's you know two to the Jets and four to the Falcons. Like, And who knows and, what and, two, three, four, and five are going to do with their picks. And we'll break it all, d- all down tomorrow, but let's just say they have loaded up in who is showing up tomorrow. Yes. They are coming to watch uh-huh. Zach Wilson. The Jets and Falcons are coming to watch Zach Wilson. And they're not the only teams. Let's do this. Okay, coming up, BYU's ace pitcher Easton Walker joins us head of the home West Coast Conference opening series. And is Kalani Satake a top 10 coach among group of five programs? He's not according to one writer. This is BYU Sports Nation. Is BYU a group of five program? This segment of BYU Sports Nation is presented by 
Visible Supply Chain Management. Softball last night, softball tomorrow on a doubleheader, and then Saturday as well, Friday afternoon, Boise State, trying to get revenge for the football loss. Game one begins 4.30 Eastern on the BYU TV app. He is Jerem Jordan. I'm Spencer Linton. This is BYU Sports Nation. A busy week, including eight games and a two-hour pro day special. Yeah. It's it's nine games, bro. It's, not, it's nine. It's nine. Okay. It's crazy, right? <laughs> I can't even compute it. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Two Friday, three Saturday, or something. It's just Ew. insane, right? It's a busy week. And a perfect time to whip it. Cougar Whip Round presented by Visible Supply Chain Management, tackling America's most challenging shipping problems. Jesse Wade enters the transfer portal, but does not rule out a return to Brigham. Do you think he'll be back here next year? I don't. I think Jesse Wade is going to end up probably playing somewhere else in the state, maybe Weber State, maybe Utah Valley. I think he could be a good fit and a nice addition for one of those programs. Yeah, I I think he'll probably not be here. Um, You know, full disclosure, he was a walk-on last year. Um, and, and so he wanted to be at BYU, which I respect a lot um, and has fought through some injuries. Reportedly got healthy, but just didn't find time in the rotation. So uh, I get it. If, if you want to play and uh, you're not going to get into the rotation, uh, you know, go find it. Jeremy, we've reached that point of the football offseason that we're ranking where coaches belong in the group of five. Well, not us. The Athletics' Chris Benini released his ranking of the top 15 Group of Five head coaches. He has Kalani Sitake at number 13. Is that fair? Uh, I didn't know that BYU was in a Group of Five. Um, exactly! This is wild. No, no, he's way higher than this. Like, he's way, like Luke Fickle's the best Group of Five coach in Cincinnati. He should be at a Power Five school soon. Cincinnati's Power Five-ish. Like, they're, they're good. No, I'd put Kalani, based on last year and then the schedule that BYU plays... Like, there, there are homies from, like, Louisiana and Ohio in there, and, like, ahead of Clint. No, no. No. He, it, I would put him in the top seven. It's not fair. Yeah, he, he needs to be top ten for sure. Yeah, 15. And even in the explanation from Vanini, it says the expectations at BYU are high as an independent. They're not a group of five program. So those expectations are held against BYU in this ring? I don't know. It's kind of weird. Okay, Bill Connolly ranked the best 80 defensive players of the 2000s. That's kind of fun. Kyle Van Oy is uh, on the list at 80. He's the first one listed. Okay. Well. Too low? I think that's fair. I mean, there are a lot of football players. I just think it's cool that Kyle Van Noy made the list at all. So, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with number 80. Kyle, Kyle is impactful for sure. It's cool he's on the list. Uh, what if I told you the third pick three years ago, Quinnen Williams, uh, was at 76. Eric Weddle at 75. Patrick Peterson at 71. Yeah, look so at those names. The fact that he is on the list. And, uh, and there were like eight non-Power 5 uh, players. It, it wasn't very good. It didn't say group of five? It just said... It said group of ten conferences <laughs> and independents. Jaron, what will be more impressive tomorrow at Pro Day? The feats of athleticism and strength or the post-BYU facial hair display? That will be impressive because once you leave BYU, uh, you grow a beard. Like, that, that's the ultimate sign that I have moved on from Brigham Young University. And for me, typically the ultimate sign that I'm on vacation. <laughs> or it was the weekend and I didn't have a game. Um, no, it's going to be the, the feats of strength. It's going to be, yes, the feats of strength, athleticism. We're going to see some really good times, some eye-popping numbers. We're going to have a lot to talk about. It's going to be fun. Hopefully eye-popping in a good way. Uh, Jeff Judkins says his entire team will return next year, taking advantage of the free COVID year. Will the ladies make it three straight NCAA tournament appearances? Yes, next. This is a given, yes, Jerem. Yes. They're, they're going to make the NCAA tournament. To me, it's how many games are they going to win? That's where the expectation is. Yeah. and They should probably win the West Coast Conference. Yes, because the well are the words coming back. Is yes, Townsend but I, coming st- back? I still like B. I liked BYU full strength against Gonzaga this year. They lost by a game and then lost to the buzzer to the Zags. So Zags will likely be the favorite, but it'll be a good battle. I, I, my expectation is BYU should win the West Coast Conference regular season next year. And just a reminder, we're talking about women, where it's actually possible. They've earned it. They've yeah, earned. They've about earned men. this. We, uh, no, it's not possible to win the men regular season let's stay with women's basketball and jeff judkins <laughs> specifically was he calling you out in his pregame speech this is what you said yesterday byu is a fun team to watch they have all the pieces 
they, that uh, you know to pull off an upset today. If they do, awesome. That'd be amazing. If they don't, amazing season. Love it. Okay. So basically, you said there's nothing really on the line. It doesn't matter because yeah. they've already exceeded expectations. Absolutely. 11 seed. Yeah. This is what Jeff Judkins said to his team pre-game. I heard that so much on the TV. Oh, the team is the underdogs who won the game. They think it's great. So I hope it's not that way. Ah, uh, I heard it on the TV. You win one game, it's good enough. Was that me, Jeffrey? It's not. Was he calling you out? I don't Use me as motivation. <laughs> I'm here to talk realistically. I'm not here to dream. Like, when you're on a team you, uh, and you're the coach and you're the players, you need to aspire higher. I'm going to sit over here and, and have real talk sometimes. Okay. This ain't Sunday school where you talk about theory, right? We're talking to talk about reality here. Sometimes people stink. Sometimes you aren't good. Uh, but in the case of UI Athletics, it's gone really well. This I week. think they're dialed in. And I, I think because they're getting that added attention, yeah, they're going to pay attention to what BYU Sports Nation says. Yeah. So I think that there was some Love of them calling Jerem Jordan out. Not adversarial. No. Oh, it's all good. Uh, yeah, use it as motivation. Listen, there, there's like a former BYU athlete who didn't like something I said on the show. There's probably a bunch. And now doesn't talk to us. Like, but I was right about my take about said person. Like, it's okay. I'm not here to be negative Nancy. I'm just here to talk in uh, realities and ask uh, faithful questions. That's how you do it. What the whip. religion's based on you here, it, man. You end it with a reference to faithful questions. Faithful questions. Yeah. Belief. Let's go. <laughs> okay, coming up. Today's Rise and Shadow. Who's it? And the ace of the BYU baseball pitching staff, Easton Walker. His coach calls him a bulldog. Man. We're going to dive into what that all means. This is BYU Sports Nation. He's a man, dude. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Easton Walker and the BYU baseball team host San Francisco. Coming up tonight, 6 Eastern, BYU TV app, BYU Radio 107.9 FM, the BYU Cougars app as well. Beginning of a three-game series, it's the home opening West Coast Conference Series. Mm -hmm. After Tuesday was the home opener, a win against UBU. This team's hot right now, won four in a row. Four straight wins, going for five, as Jared mentioned, trying to stay perfect in the West Coast Conference. Joining us now to preview tonight's matchup and the weekend series, for that matter, is the ace of the BYU baseball pitching staff, Easton Walker, with us on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Easton, great to talk with you, man. First and foremost, you got a great baseball name. What's the genesis of the name Easton? You know, um, it is a great baseball name, but I actually got it from my brothers. Um, I have two older brothers, played baseball, college baseball. Um, so it's kind of running the family for a long time. Um, they chose to name me Easton based off the baseball brand. Obviously, it's worked out pretty good for us. But, yeah. <laughs> so I was calling the BYU baseball games around the time your brothers played. So I probably would have called the games for Braden and Devin against BYU. That's how old we are here. So fun times. And, of course, your dad uh, – it. On your bio, it says your dad pitched at Utah Tech, which was Utah Technical College, which is Utah Valley University now, I believe. So, um, you're are you you're the you're the weirdo that went to BYU, you know? After all this, you know, it was kind of a weird decision, but um, I, I never imagined myself going to BYU, kind of going through high school and that stuff. But as recruiting and everything worked out, it just it worked into a perfect fit for me. Uh, worked so that I could serve my mission and. I think it was just always meant to be, and I've, and I've absolutely loved it, yeah. Cusco, Peru. So, obviously, llamas were in the mix. Yeah, yeah. there's some llamas up there. Got in touch with the alpacas, so pretty, uh, pretty cool experience. So, what, what do we need to know about llamas that we don't know? They'll spit on you. Um, oh, and it's I know true. That's how okay. They, they really do spit on you if you get close to them. That's kind of the, it's kind of a weird defense thing, but they, they do do that. <laughs> I didn't actually get spat on, but – other missionaries that tried to hop on the llamas, which they weren't supposed to do, did. So, <laughs> yeah, that's not safety zone approved. Now, listen, Easton, yeah. it's because you have great situational awareness that you were able to avoid and obedient such spit from a llama. Well, Easton well, Walker. and, and yeah. baseball players spit too, right? So that kind of lines up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Easton Walker with us on BYU Sports Nation discussing uh, BYU baseball. And I want to talk specifically about your head coach, Mike Littlewood. He's one of my favorite conversations on a regular basis. He just puts it out. He tells it how it is, and he calls you a bulldog on the mound with that mentality. For those that don't understand that, what, what does he mean by that, Easton? 
you know, I think it's just my heart to compete in every game. Um, you know, I, I, I tell people all the time, I'm not the biggest guy. I'm not the strongest guy. Um, but I've, I've been, I've been taught and, and I've grown up in this game to, uh, to once I step on the field, it's time to compete. It's time to give it everything you've got. And that's just, that's just my mentality when I take the mound. And, and that's the idea that I try to bring to the team. And that type of energy is to, you know, no matter what it is to compete and put everything between the lines and uh, just give it everything you have. And that's, and that's honestly what I try to do pitch to pitch. And I try to get better and better each time. So that's just a part of it as well. Five nine one eighty five, like you talked about, not the biggest dude, but um, it, did, like Tim Linscombe vibes with you. Like what's, what's, uh, who, who are your motivations in that regard? You know, I do follow along with him. In fact, a couple of years ago, there were a couple of stats with me and, and with him in the same group. And it was kind of cool to look at that, but I, I really admire, you know, Dustin Pedroia and, you know, smaller guys like that, that really just, they battle through everything. And, and, and you can see it. It's easy to see. You can tell who's a gamer and who's just kind of, you know, uses their, their, their strength to their advantage. And you can also see other guys in the game of baseball. And that's why it's the, that's why it's the best game ever is, you know, it doesn't matter the size and that stuff. It's all about who competes and who puts it all on the line that, that day during that game. So, um, you know. Easton, BYU baseball opened the season 3-11. and And there was a point where your coach, Mike Littlewood, said, as he's watching you take infield batting practice and pitching and saying, how are we 3-11? and This team is really good. You turn things around. You name some captains. You've won four in a row. What's been the key to getting things back on track? You know, I think we had to take a step back and realize why we were playing this game together um, as friends and as family. And I think that was, you know, having fun in the right way. I just think we were going about things um, in kind of the wrong way. Not necessarily that we were ba- that we were, you know, doing it wrong, but just the way that we were trying to have fun and the way that we were trying to compete was not the right way with how the game is played. And and all it took was a couple of meetings with with some captains and with the guys and you know, not even the coaches were involved in all that stuff, but we came together as as a family and pretty much talked about what needs to be changed in the mentality of how we approach each game. And and as you can see, the energy has been completely different. Um, the guys are having fun and it's in the right way where, I mean, we're winning games, but not only that, but we're, we're just successful and hopefully we can keep that rolling and, and keep that same energy every single day. And again, that's part of that bulldog mentality. Now it's kind of spreading on to every guy as they do the best they can to be successful in what they do. That players only meeting, man. It, it rallies yeah. uh, the troops. Let's talk about your season so far. 25 and two thirds innings pitched. 0.70 ERA. We have you down for two earned runs. Do you remember those pitches? <laughs> you know, to be honest, I don't. I've thrown a That's lot of pitches. And, and I've given up a lot of hits, and a lot of things have, you know, gone my way that maybe shouldn't have. But, um, yeah, it's, it's hard to recall all that. that. That's pretty good, and I'm mostly giving you a hard time there. What, what's led to your success no. this year? Because those are bonkers uh, numbers, man. Um, like I said, I think it's just been my mindset. You know, last year I kind of struggled a little bit. I'm um, starting the year. Um, I kind of came off my sophomore year after my mission. I was super excited to get back out and go play and kind of prove people that, you know, I served my mission and I'm right back to where I am. And I had a phenomenal year. And then, uh, my junior year, I kind of just expected it to keep going and, and it didn't happen. And I kind of got laid back a little bit. Well, this year, knowing it was my senior year and that I, uh, I wanted to put everything else that I had and, you know, just for my family and for all those who have taught me so much. And for myself, I wanted to be able to walk with a smile on my face and to know that at least win or lose at the end of the day, I know I enjoyed being at the park and, and I gave it everything that I had for my team. I enjoyed being with my best friends out there and, and competing with them. And I think that motivation has just led me to have, have a, have a great start. So hopefully it keeps up that way. A top 10 ERA in the entire country, minimum 25 innings pitch number six, to be exact with that 0.70 ERA Easton Walker with us on BYU sports nation, the ACE of the Cougars pitching staff. How do you feel about pitching in the rain and cold? Because the forecast tonight does not look favorable. You know, I'm pretty used to it. If you want to look back to my sophomore year and that stuff, it was a blizzard every time I threw. And in fact, the guys <laughs> joke with me all the time because I've got some sort of uh, tradition of throwing in, in the freezing cold weather. And, and to be honest, I kind of embrace it now. It's been part of playing at home. 
and it's kind of my advantage and that's the that's the best way that I can look at it you know I know there's plenty of different ways I can look at it and, and hang my head about it and you know wish for better things but in, in all reality I, it just makes me more excited to to go out and pitch at home how do you pump yourself up is it with a a walkout song batters have walk-up songs like does a pitcher have a walkout song and is that how you find the energy to get ready to go on the mound um, to be honest, I do have a walkout song, um, and, and obviously it, it kind of puts me in the in the right mindset. But the one that pumps me up the most is probably my wife. Um, she's she's kind of on me a little bit about making sure I'm always doing the best I can and being the best of me. Um, not not only on the field but off the field as well. So you know, I, it doesn't seem like much, but I really do think about her being on my mind all the time, and so that motivates me when I take the field. Easton scoring um, some serious really points right now. Yeah. <laughs> Valentine's Day, <laughs> man, it's been like, <laughs> it's been like five. She wants me to be the best I can be, especially this year. She wants me. She wants me to to really walk away with this and putting in all the hard work I've done over the years um, to just you know to know that I've I've at least done my job. So we got to play the walkout song when you come in the 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 door from uh, back into your home, right? <laughs> like, hey, I'm here. Let's go. Right mindset. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned getting the job done. We learned you actually, and and sometimes athletes, most of the time athletes don't have a job, but you actually have like a day job and you're doing school and you're doing, uh, you're the ace of the pitching staff. So what's it like managing all that and what do you do for work? Uh, to be honest, this last, this last fall, I, well, starting last in the pandemic kind of hit and uh, things kind of got a little crazy. I started working with my father-in-law down at his insurance agency. Nice. Um, he invited me to, he invited me to come in and see if I liked it. I ended up really enjoying it. Um, obviously I knew a lot of his clients. Um, they're from my hometown, Pleasant Grove and all that stuff. So it really clicked with me. I really enjoyed working with him. And so I kind of stuck with that and obviously trying to make a little bit of money with my wife to try to help support was really nice. And so I did that all throughout the fall full time, um, which was probably the, the most craziest time. Now it's kind of, calm down a little bit I, I do kind of go into the office a little bit to get some work in in some mornings when I've got a little bit of time between class and, and practice and, and weights and all that stuff and somehow I you know stay organized I, I get things done pretty well and I do a pretty good job with it I have to give myself credit for that but it is it is crazy and it's a lot of work but you got to enjoy it while it lasts I guess who doesn't want to go with an insurance guy that's going to minimize damage Easton Walker <laughs> is the man Easton that's great to perfect. talk with you brother Hey, appreciate you guys so much. Thanks for uh, thanks for inviting me on here. You got it. The Cougars and San Francisco tonight. Easton Walker on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show up. He's out. awesome, dude. I can't wait to watch tonight. It's going to be fun. <laughs> okay, coming up, who has the greatest opportunity to raise their NFL stock? Plus, who has earned the rise and shout-outs? Been some memorable performances this week. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation's Rise and Shoutout is presented by Mountain America Credit Union, guiding you forward. BYU Sports Nation, always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Download the podcast, Google BYU Sports Nation podcast, subscribe, review, and rate it. Our question of the day, which BYU football cougar has the opportunity to increase their NFL stock the most tomorrow during BYU's Pro Day? Our elite voice of the day, presented by Sundance Mountain Resort, comes in from Will Bickman on Twitter. Definitely Brady Christensen. His pro football focus numbers are off the charts, and if he shows off some impressive numbers during pro day, he could boost his draft stock. Yeah, there's a disconnect between the PFF grades and where he's going to go in the draft. Because if the PFF grades were the how he was perceived, then he would go in the top five. And Austin Lee would be in the NFL right now, for that matter. Right. So it's not everything. It's something. For sure. But, uh, yeah, he can impress tomorrow. Let's see how he does. I'm excited to watch it. This is a big opportunity for these guys. Today's rise and shout-outs presented by Mountain America Credit Union guiding you forward. Let's just collectively give it to the entirety of BYU women's basketball for what they did yes. late in the season. Absolutely. Uh, going to the NCAA tournament as an 11, beating Rutgers, uh, putting up a great fight against Arizona. Shout out to Paisley uh, Harding for playing through a broken hand. She broke her hand against Rutgers. So it's in the third quarter, meaning she plays the whole fourth quarter on Monday and gets and buckets, makes free throws, gets buckets in a clutch situation. So Shaylee Gonzalez going over one k. The whole the whole team, like 
Everybody, Hampson, Graham, I'll be our everybody. They're all coming back. They all matter. Smiler, everybody. Let's go. Our thanks to today's guest, ESPN's Todd McShay and the ace of BYU baseball, Easton Walker. Started Dennis Pitta, ran out of time. We had more compelling guest opportunities. We took those. Conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use the hashtag BYU. For Jerem Jordan, I am Spencer Linton. Shout out to Michael Rucker. We'll see you tonight on the BYU TV app for BYU baseball at 6 Eastern against San Francisco. And pro day tomorrow, baby. Two-hour special. Go Cougs. There's always a way to find someone that you can serve.